Good evening. Um, I'm Kelly Kivlin. I am the curatorial associate here at Dia Art Foundation. And um, I just want to welcome you to tonight's reading. <laughs> it's Co-curated by Vincent Katz and Dia curator Jasmine Raymond, the readings in contemporary art, I'm sorry, the readings in contemporary poetry series attempts to chart a series of lineages combining poets of different generations often and infusing the series with new voices and work. The readings in contemporary poetry series um, at Dia Chelsea is supported in part with public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs and we'd also like to extend a warm thank you to Amalia Dine and Adam Lindemann, Barbara and Charles Wright, and an anonymous donor for their generous support of this program. We also would like to thank Brooklyn Brewery for their complimentary beverages. And finally, I would like to thank the poets, Thomas Fink and Bob Holman, for their generous acceptance to be part of this series, as well as John Sprague, Patrick Heilman, Rebecca Rice, Carrie David, and Sarah Kovac for their kind help with the coordination of this program. It is now my pleasure to introduce Vincent Katz, who will provide an introduction for the poets this evening. Thank you again. Thank you all for coming tonight. This is going to be a great reading. I'm really excited about it. Um, and so we will. Thomas Fink will read first, we'll have a short break, and then we'll be back with Bob Holman and Papa Suso. Thomas Fink was born in New York City in 1954. He has three degrees, all of them in English literature. Bachelors from Princeton and a master's and a doctorate from Columbia. He's the author of seven books of poetry, including After Taxes, Many of these are published by Marsh Hawk Press, so I'm not going to say that every time unless it's a different press. After Taxes, 2004. Clarity and Other Poems, 2008. Yinglish Strophies, 1 to 19, from Truck Books in 2009. An Autopsy Turvy from Meritage Press in 2010, a book of collaborative po poetry with Maya Diablo Mason, his daughter. And most recently, Peace Conference, that is from Marshawk Press from 2011. He's the author of a book of criticism, A Different Sense of Power, Problems of Community in Late 20th Century Poetry. And he co-edited Burning Interiors, David Shapiro's Poetry and Poetics. Fink is professor of English at CUNY LaGuardia and lives in New York City. The poems in Thomas Fink's 2004 collection, After Taxes, have a classically deranged diction that feels spot on. It is original and entertaining, while channeling that secret weapon poet's poet Jim Brody, among other senses of 1960s and 70s experimental poetics. Most of the poems in that book have titles that continue into their first lines, a la Marianne Moore, but the effect is rarely genteel. Humor leavens the disorganization, and there is a cumulative beauty in the abstract rhythms. Sometimes he surprises himself. More and more since that time, Fink has worked in sequences, which are simultaneously conceptual, visual, and oral. In that way, he aligns himself with many of the concerns of the language poets. At the same time, he connects to identity politics with his Yinglish strophes, the term Yinglish referring to Yiddish syntax transported into English. Other Fink series include the dented reprises, the nonce sonnets, the deconstructed sestinas, the Hainaku exfoliations, which I'm still not sure I understand. Maybe he'll feel like explaining them, or maybe not, the goads, and the Dusk Bowl intimacies. In his series, in his long poem called Generic Whistle Stop, narrow strands of words intersect like DNA helixes or butterfly wings. This long visual poem begins, quote, and I'm going to read it as it's broken into syllables. Are we conscript ed camp? pain long, career long, insanely long, to drum for a rumor as though it can 
though it can be a promise potent as statistics that need little gloss. As words and parts of words are atomized, readers are encouraged to interpret pain, the second syllable of campaign, as pain, a feeling of suffering. It is fast, elegant poetry, and it will take you for a ride if you let it. Let it, and please welcome Thomas Fink to Dia. What a, what a fantastic introduction, Vincent. Thank you so much. Bob Holman, great to read with you. Um, thank you, Kelly. Um, it's great to be here. So I'm going to start with uh, Vincent mentioned GOAD, the GOAD series. That's G-O-A-D, GOAD, not GOAT or God or anything like that. So GOAD 1, razor, tactless, overwhelming help as if from a distant neighbor's God, beyond a reasonable clout, encouragement vicious to snare a dark logic that may accord with the limits of the solo and of the statistically challenged. A signs redundant, you cannot socialize here. Goad four, alphabet of vintage vitriol galled at tomb temperature and sometimes inflatable, insist on the obvious, a testament to growing impotence, incomprehension doomed to ripen. It stops when the patient dies, nothing to improv improve, funniest alive. Goad seven. Genial schmuck keenly attuned to world as extension of his art. Genial until someone with opinions would buck the triumphalism or ransack that thick subconscious. Riding, riding the rails, thinking of not, think of not scowling at one who bids you to move parcels, who merely expects to sit too. Dented reprise, eight. Bad plans are delivered, I'm dismayed. When a broken art hands rubies to the overpaid, they're spinally overgrown. This bummer won't clear with bombing. Warhead count overflow. Smothered land better, feed your creds. Don't infect what your good nook bred, though. Charm is threatening our very strife today, yearns for a churning argot to pull out cost delay. Get up out of the shed, drag a poem across your lead. <laughs> I'll slit a noose today, employ the means to build again what's been unmade. Thank you. English strophes, 16. Benchmarks, a crock of them. Terrorists laugh monkeying. Harvest full on refugees, stutter generation. Neighborhoods a couple they need. You like testimony? Pogrom, soyging, sectarian, this foundation. Every taller democracy goes such a moment young behind their ears. But this enduration, how good nations reveal violently the humanitarian since television. And the more secure, it isn't a hell of a much there, especially Baghdad, to capitalize. For ally, you should, in their alley, blinding little poor this country, trust security gangs. Tomorrow starts extremists Dement, demand that same barrel as you. More decent a bargain yet. 
English strophes 20. Choir downtown of screeches, doom credit. Loans was loans with not even muscle a few. The flab full. We should believe at the lice washed out. Those unscruples, not down enough the toilet, vicious men. Yesterday was a nice movie. Harvest 90s of microscope chips. To remember, can't your treasury refurbish nothing? Is second Roosevelt the Franklin regaining? <laughs> painful, painful skinny on meals economized. Black now even, half to penicillin, transparencies. So the next poem is from uh, third series I'm reading tonight, and it's called Non Sonnet. And they actually, you know, a lot of New York school poets uh, write sonnets, right? But these actually, in some sense, are sonnets, but uh, um, I'm not going to tell you why. <laughs> you have to read them and figure it out. Uh, they're not 14 lines, they're non iambic pentameter, but they have other characteristics of sonnets. Non sonnet 13. This is uh, for Brenda, Brenda Ijima, who couldn't be here tonight, an e echo poet of note. Non sonnet 13. Could anyone rid plastic of its career long wrap? Don't cap the startup capital, no matter how drastic, as we can find where a spent item's set point gets spastic and liquefaction triumphs, wed its distilled sap to primary water and realize jet fuel unsinged by residual crap. An example out of fabricated air, but both the iconoclastic and the heavily invested should concur that nascent George Washington Carvers will be granted cushions to disdain doom prints and stack ridiculous thought accidents till a few float adjacent to catalytic economies poised, quasi-miraculous, to crack ambient exigencies. And the next one is not Sonnet 14, which uh, was written August 2008. Now, uh, Obama and uh, McCain were neck and neck in August 2008, and I thought, I really don't know if Obama's going to be elected or McCain. So I wrote this final, I decided, you know, after this, the non-sonnet ends. So if you want to call this prophecy, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Non-sonnet 14. While I write one last eccentric sonnet, elephantine carnival barkers blast their party's prime obstacle as a tornado belching 60s radical. A green one at that. Let's suppose he can indict refashioned yet chemically unaltered Bushism and latch it to the plight of middle strata vertigo so thunderously that he squeaks past the good soldier. Whether or not President Barack Obama aims to cast off a centrist prudence that kept Uncle Bill afloat through the stormy 90s, the right will court laryngitis. If he'd earmark some abundance from corporate entities, to cramped bleacher folks with poor prescriptions, won't many of his cronies rage surreptitiously to blunt these impulses? Beyond idealizing preacher ticks, plenty of blogs prime an egalitarian pragmatism absent from our main stage history. No stunt. That popular momentum will tilt against the cronies and barkers is possible. So, uh, with that in mind, I'm going to read generic whistle stop 
which was also done by Portable Press at Yo-Yo Labs as a chapbook. And um, it's the first poem in Peace Conference. And what it is really um, is the, the rhetoric of the 2008 campaign, all of the candidates, all four of them, Palin, the most important, of course, uh, Biden, uh, McCain, and Obama. Generic whistle stop. This is kind of long, longish. Are we conscripted, campaign long, career long, insanely long to drum for a rumor as though it can be a promise potent as statistics that need little gloss? The American gleam is not abstract when shipped off to high rolling shareholders. Eight years ago, broken poles shook up nerve endings. Red, white, and Jew, we thought there were breaks to count on. Axe relief has charmed loophole adepts. Americans think they know butter, but they really know jam. I can measure the faces of local steel and the ritual will fulfill some, but premiums don't care. Prophecy declares an essential that will heal the skittish economy, the sick treasury, but does the oath of office confer such powers on any screen image? Someday, You'll watch your diploma harness nuclear security and suckle five businesses into maturity. Let's guard against making victims out of my humanity. In the 90s, chipwise valley pioneers seemed tucked into an inalienable cause. So it was easy to ignore what was turning into the worst soil in recent history. Would that they could return and keep us inevitable. And I'd rather lose an erection then see elite cheerleaders and public spenders choose a war from my hyperextended country that engenders millions of new transnational jobs, sans a snappy deus ex machina. Now, taxation of outsourced temperament should be plenty to gratify a maverick marching to the bleat, to the bite, to the beast of his own mortgaged groceries while ready to register as a proud citizen of the greatest earth that most can know. Have we gotten as dangerous as we are afraid. Now that's about half the poem, but that's, I think, what I want to do. Uh, no, not even half. Really goes on a bit. <laughs> the English Strophes 21. One brother slipped out through Russian army, me cozy on New York, but other family men we wasn't to register communist survey, and women trapped Odessa. Those Nazis didn't concentrate. They killed immediate without asking nothing. Okay, Germany, the first war, taken revolting that treaty. Protest yet, but you should franchise a devil? Absolute, finishes a whole population that didn't treaty you. It's very impossible to talk human when throat furious and mouth pushes out hernia. Jump out history 60 more years around. We could prepare a movie to their mind, the commanders. Might clearly what disastering, even not equal so, with on both sides the middle. A shame, long at the last for some share, to act a mensch or two, this will de-escalate. Dented reprise nine. Well, I scold your stunts and I mold your eyes, so the base nutrition's not Compromise, it's a clutch intrusion, ain't no time to debrief. He's got him seeping like a bag with a hole. Back down, baby, let the hot climbs cool. They won't heed his bite to groove their kite. They just bleed from new incisions. And how many loads must a van sag beneath before one snares another van? One more dented reprise. Thank you for your patience. Dented reprise 10 for my uh, collaborator, Maya Diablo Mason, who uh, loves the doors and actually got to see them last year, amazingly. 
Dented Reprise 10. Wake me, famished marrow land, well, the flock says it's time to pose now. The stars stall fast, all flushed with lies. I throw the birds that you long to sear. Shattered vision, children's bled. Facile dry description of the pressure election. We're going to fake it through the mid-flight steams, rumbling in the peon troves. We're going to slake it, baby, through our mime. That is where the blues is bred. Ants on spires get revenge. Steal one's grace to flow. Fill one's race to grow. Um, I think I'll just read one little poem at random from uh, Autopsy Turvey, Autopsy Turvey, uh, my uh, collaborative collection with Maya Diablo Mason. Miss Problem Wheels. You're my daughter, my special problem. He's got your wheels. Let him stare at his own damn feet. Everything he has is because of you. Scowl if that makes you happy. She should put a job on him. To be a prune in the moonlight is often a residue of spiritual indigestion. Prune is the wrong posture for even a thimble of Miss Sunshine. Did she realize what door was almost open? So I'm going to finish with, um, how am I doing on time? Can I, can I do six more short ones? Yeah. That's right? OK. So I'm going to finish with the last series in uh, Peace Conference uh, with six poems from it called uh, Dusk Bowl Intimacies that Vincent mentioned. And um, he was asking what a hainaku is. So a hainaku is a form invented by a Filipino-American poet, Eileen Tabios. One word, two words, three words. It's like the haiku. So this has a little bit of that in there. But this is a prose poem that ends with hainakus. And it has, um, these have a certain uh, ratio of sentences to, uh, to words. Dusk bowl. Intimacies one. My horrible parents just threw me out to the core, like a core. I used to worship against them. Couldn't even stay in that city of aggressive cathedrals and well-connected martyrs who's going out of business signs kept getting resurrected. When evil love defaces the file of my life, where are facelifts? Because I have nothing in my pocket, would you like to speak with them about it? If we left in January, it wouldn't be so frigid. For three nights, we'd eat magnificently. Dusk Bowl Intimacies 4. Here's to all the wonderful people in the world. May some of them survive, you especially, my charming brother, who is really my service man. Are we lucky to be lasting so long? Because beyond those bluster-faced acrobatics, this fellow's a bit frail, too. You shouldn't let much stuff leak out of your rectum. I wish I was more of a sister to you. First, I must buy some neighbors. Dusk Bowl Intimacies, 13. This is the year you can kill people. That's why they ascended. She was very polite about being murdered. One grandmother who never got it. What about when the fancy ones tell you you're going to die? And the story repeats for each. You live when you live, and you die when you die many times originally. This is the gallows. I'm dead now. I died because I had to go certain places. So far, nobody died of the intricacies I died of. I did die almost once, but I can't really die, so I won't do it too much. And should I drop in on my dead? And I should drop in on my dead. When do you expect me to die? 
I wasn't too thrilled to go, but I am now. Now I know where I stand, so I can die, and I'm thinking about how to buy the farm. First, I have to get myself a husband. He's hanging around until I die. I should want to conclude about then, you can't be fancy. When I die, you can take these pants. <laughs> Three more. <clears throat> Dusk Bowl Intimacies 15. Such devastation has been done to me. Everything gets scalloped up and goes into it, and it doesn't look like anything to twirlers of silk appendages. Here's a child with a woman who stole my jewelry, the one she purposely made for him. She must have been way up in the system, as I didn't see her. Now that's an ugly mode of being, and very slicing. I thought over her character, and I damned her, and I even damned her today. Tried, in fact, to wipe up the hole on this anniversary of an assassination. I couldn't. Moving away from you slowly. I'll never be sad again. Evidently, my heart is spectacular. She'll be a miserable wife. Should he escape her and marry me? Um, I'm going to end with Dusk Bowl Intimacies 17. Well, anything you buy, you can return within two years. I don't care if it's gold. There are so many children who look my, like my lover, my ex-lover. No blame to be blamed here. I won't jump out the window because that's painful. At one point in the century that you, that's used up, I was a very pretty woman who could have done a lot with a flash bulb or an electric timer. Not era prone or stupid either. Evidently, he hid many pearls in the trunk of an unused guitar. I was supposed to make sure that he was finished. Otherwise, it would be another $100,000. I was practically shaking hands with the number. Not married to anyone here. You can see I have two beds, and mine's just lovely now. Thank you very much. We're going to get started again, and I'm very excited that Bob Holman is going to be reading now. Longtime friend, collaborator, and fighter in the trenches. It says that Bob Holman was foreign, but I don't think he was foreign. Bob Holman was born. <laughs> but never forlorn. Bob, was, Bob Holman was born in 1948 in La Follette, Tennessee. Graduated Columbia College in 1970 and studied with Ted Berrigan and Alice Notley at the St. Mark's Poetry Project. He has taught at Naropa University, the New School, Bard College, Columbia, and NYU, both of which he teaches at currently and in workshops throughout the US, Central and South America, Europe, and Africa. Holman has been a central presence on the poetry performance scene for decades, in poets' theater, slam, and hip hop poetry, first at the New York New Poets Cafe, of which he was director from 1989 to 1996, then at the Bowery Poetry Club, which he founded with his wife, the painter Elizabeth Murray, in 2002, and of which he is artistic director. He produced five seasons of poetry spots for WNYC-TV and the five-part PBS series, The United States of Poetry, which won an international public television prize. He was the host of MTV's Spoken Word Unplugged, appeared on HBO Deaf Poetry Jam, and created the first major spoken word record label, Mouth Almighty, Mercury. Is that still going? Oh, I need to, need to found another one. <laughs> Bob's current mission is bringing attention to endangered languages. As he says, 
Half the languages on the planet will probably disappear this century. His three-part series on this subject, On the Road, which is available outside, is also can be seen on Link TV. And he's in preparation for Word Up, a 90-minute special for PBS on endangered languages shot in Australia, Wales, and Hawaii. Recent travels in this regard, in addition to Wales, have included trips to visit the griots of West Africa and their counterparts, the Asmaris of Ethiopia. Bob Holman is the author of 15 books of poetry, including Tear to Open from Power Mad Press in 1979, Panic DJ, The Collect Call of the Wild, A Couple of Ways of Doing Something, a collaboration with Chuck Close, and most recently, Picasso and Barcelona from Paper Kite Press 2011, which is available. He has released several CDs of his poetry and music collaborations, including In With The Out Crowd, in 1996, and The Awesome Whatever from Bowery Records in 2007. Bob Holman's poems traverse traditions, dialects, dialectics, while always maintaining a down-home, easygoing American way of using common speech as poetry. He makes this seem easy, but it's very complex. Don't try this at home. In fact, maybe you should only ever try it in front of an audience, at least that is what Holman has always bet the farm on, on one-to-one -one or one-to-many transition of power that is the human power of communication. Many of his books recuperate performance texts, but all his poetry is someone talking. His 1979 collection, Tear to Open, begins, quote, go ahead, open the door. Hello, white water. Hello there, bridge. Hello, figure on the other side of the bridge, saying hello just myself. Holman's panic DJ's rhymes and trills adapted rap's rhythms to his downtown art-based experience and found it could fit. Holman has penned occasional poems such as 1990 with its refrain, it's 1990 and Nelson Mandela is free. More recently, he devoted a book-length work to imagining the voice of the young Picasso before the painter left his hometown of Barcelona for the big city. These poems are an apex of Holman's achievement, lightly touching on the master, calling out his foibles as a way of observing foibles we all have, while simultaneously charging the youthful painter's ambition and grace as a way of suggesting we all can possess such qualities. It is a heroic sequence in the face of dire realities. It sings and lets the spirit loose to dance among the barroom shadows. We should all join the dance, he seems to say. It is a great pleasure that Bob will be reading here and that he will be joined by his longtime collaborator and friend, Papa Suso. Alhaji Papa Suso is a master kora player and oral historian from the Gambia, West Africa. Hailing from a long line of griots, of the Mandinka people, he was taught the kora by his father and has been playing since the age of five. The kora, a 21-stringed harp lute, is the preferred instrument of the Mandinka Jalolu, itinerant musicians who traditionally were attached to royal courts where their duties included recounting the tribal history and genealogy, composing commemorative songs, and performing at important tribal events. Today, Papa Suso is a goodwill ambassador traveling around North America, giving classroom presentations and formal concert performances, where he recounts the history of his country and his people, discusses the roles of griots in West African culture, and performs the classic songs of the griot repertoire. He has been a regent's lecturer in ethnomusicology at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and is the director of the Korea Musa Research Center in Gambia. He has at least three albums. One of them is Sotuma Sere, Classical Praise Proverbs. Another is called A Gathering of Elders, which mixes ancient Kora melodies and contemporary African-American rhythms. And his newest CD is called Kayes Jali Naana, which is available for sale here today. Papa Suso has been working with Bob Holman for over 10 years. Bob translated his first book of poems 
And the two created a TV documentary on the Griot Trail, which you can also see at linktv.org. He's performed in many venues in Africa, Asia, Europe, the Middle East, North America, and in venues such as Carnegie Hall and the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. So please join me in welcoming Bob Holman and Papa Suso. What a guy, huh? Thank you, Vincent. You know, you can really count on getting treated by respect over at this place, you know? Tom, super duper reading. I'm never formal uh, in openings, but I am today. You know, thanks uh, to you for really setting a marvelous stage. So Pop and I are on our way over to uh, St. Anne's where we'll do the uh, PS 122 gala tonight. So it is just so super to stop off with Vincent and you all. I wanted to change the world, but it was occupied. <laughs> so I went up my window and I tried to catch a breeze in my baseball glove. But the breeze was overtaxed already with the kites held aloft looking back at us with spy drones and jawbones and Mater D clones. So I just went down to Wall Street. That's all street. Yeah, it's all sweet with a brawl beat and some raw meat. And when we occupy the zone of the capitalist nose cone, you can bet we're aiming to be framing demands on the sidewalk. So come on down to Zuccotti Park. Bring your own consciousness and some rolling papers. Unleash your sense of humor on some deadly pedants and let the spirit invigorate your sorry consciousness. Yes, U.S., you need a jolt. The coffee's gone weak at the knees, and the trains run out of steam, and in black and white you dream of a land that promises everything and then laughs behind your back. You watch out, America. Soon you're gonna get occupied by pies. That's right, occupied by pies. The pies, the pies are growing gander and grander with each incoming tide of pies, an incoming tide of pies, cause there's no outsourcing of the truth. And the magnificent battering ram of wealth on screen keeps driving the responsible into a surrealist scene where the mommy and the daddy got no job, but it's okay, cause they pay and they pay. But where's the wallet today? Ooh, it's down by the steamless railway center. It's got the wings of an angel and the tail of an epic story of how you were born. You were born a twin where one of you had to win. And the one who won is carted off to learn the gun. And the losers are stacked in the cardboard shacks and will occupy. We'll occupy until the day we die. Maybe you guys are wondering how the coral was born. It's actually how uh, Papa and I met. Uh, he was playing the cora, and I said, hello just myself and that's what he said so this is the uh, story that papa has sung to me by papa suso called ali laika no called how cora was born Salia, 
Salia Salia Namu ma Salia Ngora barobe kumala Namu Salia Julaila Oh, this story was born long, 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 long ago, so long ago that it was a place and not a time. Ma jato nyao sangumba yo jato le ye la la be kuma la jato ba di mo be lo julo ba na na. Oh, that's a good poem. There was a man, he was so alone, the only person that he could talk to was Africa. Well, Jelia was the name of the song that was being sung, but the man wasn't singing it. You see, luckily there was a tree. There was a tree nearby. And behind that tree. Who was hiding behind that tree? It was the man's partner. His name was Saba Kidane. Well, all the sun and all the water were condensed to a single tiny block. Oh, and the man planted that block into the sandy soil and then he blew and he blew on that spot. Oh, he blew and he blew and he blew and he blew. And every time he blew, he thought he was hearing something. And what he was hearing, of course, was his partner who was singing. But the man didn't even know what singing was. He couldn't sing yet. All he could do was talk. He blew and he listened. 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 And then, the plant started to come out of the soil, dark green, and it was pushing its way towards the song. It was moving towards the breath because it was already made out of the sun and the rain. Don't you remember back at the beginning when we said that? You gotta keep your ears open. Oh, oh, was it that happened next? Was it the tree disappeared? Guess what happened to that? Well, folks, if you just take a look right over here, you'll see what I'm talking about. That tree is what became the neck of the cora and the handles. It was a rosewood tree, as I recall. And what was growing on the end of that vine? That would be the calabash. Oh, you say, okay, 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 what happened to the vine itself? And I say, what about the 21 strings? Haven't you heard about that part? What about the cow, the cow that became the tuning strings up here? So this is a pre-peg technology. You just move the, these tuning rings up and down to change the pitch of the cora. And of course, stretch tight over the calabash you got the cowhide is going to come. And of course, what about the thumbtacks, Papa? The thumbtacks that hold the skin tight against the cow. What about the resonator hole? We've we got the microphone in there today, but you can also put your money in there. It's an amazing instrument. Oh! Well, you go right on ahead, talking like that, because I'm playing Cora now. Next time, I'm going to tell you about the cow. Tungala womba di wujeta tungala wonteri bala sanji wuleke lini kemena ni me jalun koli ya tungala mbadi wujeta tungala wonteri bala. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So Papa said, uh, why don't we do something different here tonight, something new. So we are going to be doing a, uh, um, a piece that, you know, sometimes the poets just have to, you know, have to. Poets will speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. And thus, Papa and I have worked up this poem uh, for all of the white guys who are trying to break into reggae. It's called Pastaman, and it's the first time that a griot has ever done reggae. But, pasta, but Pastaman, Papa, is very international. Pastaman cooking in a limousine. Wind is rolled up, poems written in the steam. Poems start to change it to a recipe. I'm cooking up a story, you're still hungry. Be careful, next thing you know, you're going to be dancing. Now, I'm warning you. Deep in the blue sea, deep in the memory, connected, perfected, totally poetry. Yuppie got a puppy and the baby got a pamper, doing the 500 in a Winnebago camper. Why? Why, 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 why man cry? Back in the history, I shot the deputy for not making sauce sufficiently garlicky. Everyone's entangled in a single ecstasy, single strain of pastaman linguine. Oh, this is the wildlife, carbohydrates out of sight, pastaman flash and give eyesight inside. See the world through spaghetti headlines, ravioli. Only fig leaf pasta, pasta paradise. Why? Fresh onions, that's why. So much pasta, man, cannot give it away. What's the matter with a platter of pasta pate? You two can have your own pasta man beret. Keep the home fries burning, your sorbet gourmet. Oh, pasta man starring on his own TV show. Yesterday's menu's already obsoleto. Today we're gonna show you how to roll a pasta filled burrito. That no abichuelas on my tuxedo. When it might boil over the pot. Is bubbling, it might boil over. Your mind is troubling, it might boil over. Dynamite might boil away to nothing, spoil your appetite. It happened to me while reading Weekly Reader. The future was coming, it would be beta, beta and defa, and big up forever, and the sun's on the horizon, and it's Always rising, nickel for a can, nickel for a bottle, nickel for the trickle down sound that bought you America the beautiful in quarantine, a cardboard mattress and a cardboard dream. You know, uh, um, the garbage can uh, fires under the Hudson. You hear the dogs are howling as you toss some spuds on. Pasta Man's recipe's getting sort of smelly. Rat ratatouille, vermin vermicelli. God! It, it might boil over the pot that is a bubbling. It might boil over your mind that is a troubling. It might boil over dynamite that might boil away to nothing. What's wrong? Spoil your appetite? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. you Thank you, Papa. I have an announcement to make. Okay, it's a beautiful Bob. announcement. Please don't go out without buying a copy of my CD, Amuruk. <laughs> it's, it's wonders to see the griots come to grips with the uh, horrific triumph of capitalism. <laughs> Papa, you want to do Kumbija Kantaba? Kantaba. 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 Kumbija Kantaba. This is a short one, it's funny. 
uh, have to warn you for that, you know. It's funny, and it's uh, got, uh, it's about a guy who has really, 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 really bad luck. And nothing good has ever happened to him. Um, when he was a little boy, have I got this right, Papa? When he was a little boy, they, uh, he put on the clothes, he looked so bad. But when they put on some rags, some secondhand clothes, then uh, he looked really good. So he found a new way of dressing that was his own style. And he just looked so good in cast offs. And he never did good in school could never do his homework, couldn't find a job. He couldn't even find his way to the job interviews. That's how bad it was. I think that's how it starts, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us in Mandinga so we get a feeling of the original? Mm. Come be la jamana dieta, kande ba la jamana dieta. Sa jo ja jo jamana dieta, o yo jamana dieta. Can you buy cheat sheet for this because we're going to go to next to a, a, a beautiful a big buffet dinner party there he is and you know and everybody's just eating and enjoying themselves but guess who is there with like a cloud over his head and uh the people are eating the tubanyo the maize it's delicious, they say. And the sanyo, there is. sanyo is millet. It's incredibly tasty. Mano! Mano is rice. Wow, it's the basis of the world. menu. Geo. Geo, water. Thirst quenching water for our men. Kumjibo Kantaba. Kantaba, sorry. Kantaba becomes blood oh no everything tastes so bad it tastes so horrible horrific he can't give you the amount of taste into mud and sand and he's just ugh. are you starting to get the idea of what life is like for this guy but I do not sit, I do not, 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 I Okay. How is he feeling? Not so good. Not so good. So he decided everything. Okay, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to end it all. He takes himself out to a great big old tree and sits beneath it and calls up to God. Oh God! Oh boy, is this bad. I don't wanna live anymore, God. I'm not gonna live anymore, God. It's all over, God. He's just talking and he's yelling and he's screaming and everything's bad is coming out of his mouth. Maybe you'd say he was a poet, I don't know. But anyway, it's bad and he just goes on and on. And then guess what happens? You're right, a tree limb falls off and lands right beside him. Kunjiba Kantaba gets up and runs off and says, Oh, now I understand everything. <laughs> Well. I think that does it for our part of the program. Okay, I'll play, okay. I'll play one more song. Do you like to dance? Uh oh. Do you like okay. to dance? 
everybody. Come on, let's go. Okay, okay Papa. This has never happened to you before. Let's go. Yes, and I'm over Come on, everybody, come on, come on. Namadam bina baila, ten name bina to la batema. Moment you do the yamin cola, aliman, then Kulum, and you all have a world. Do you have a tent in a fangana Kambanya lundola, kasa mazi bangu kambi keno lukele. Perasi danya tongo ni bibi daramo, bibi daramo le wane mfa tujawara. Tena kinki nyaro si dia ba jisi si chuleje mekema. Siri fo be sanza wale ye buba karihai nara. Nyamfali mo siri fo ye katana fa tuture ni nyamo. Thank you, everybody, for everything. Thank you. Don't go without the copy of my CD.